Hey, um, this is a second video in my exploration of uh, NeoVim and specifically LazyVim. I uh, was inspired recently, uh, my colleague Dan Kelly and I have been talking about um, using AIs for coding purposes and uh, both of us have been noodling around a bit. And one of the things that I noticed or, or he noticed or we were chatting about was that uh, LazyVim actually has a um, Copilot plugin so that you can actually use Copilot while you're you're working with with LazyVim. So I, I thought I would actually give it a try and I thought it might be worth just making a quick video about it so you show some of the things that I had done. Um, first of all, uh, to use Copilot, you have to turn it on. I, I have already done that in my GitHub account. Um, I have a GitHub education account, which gives me, I think, free access to it. Um, otherwise you may have to subscribe, although it looks like maybe recently they changed their policy and Copilot is free for open source maintainers. I don't know if I qualify for that or not because I'm also an education, um, GitHub education member. So well, anyway, once you activate it, you get this little Copilot uh, thing on the website. I think there's all kinds of plugins for all sorts of different things, including VS Code, which is what they really want to push because that's the Microsoft product. And of course, GitHub is owned by Microsoft. Um, one of the things I've been playing with is to, to do this co-pilot conversation, and I, I won't go through this here, but you know, this is like chat GPT, right? You can talk to co-pilot. And I had an example here where I did some, uh, asked it to generate some R code for working with Argo data and uh, kind of a funny experience. Uh, I'm not, not gonna chat about that here. This is about uh, NeoVim. In any case, this is co-pilot. Um, <clears throat> when, and there's some setup involved in this, uh, and, and some of this I have kind of already done, so I don't know that it will all uh, be obvious when we get in here, but um, I thought we'd try enabling the NeoVim plugin. So I'm gonna go into NeoVim, and the way you do this is you go in, hit X to go into the Lazy Vim Extras menu. You can see all the extras that I have. Um, selected and right at the top here, this recommended one is ai.copilot. You can see the dependencies that it needs. So you just hit X to enable that. And of course it says we need to restart lazy vim. So I'm gonna do that. Now it's installing that thing. All right, now it gives you this thing. You need to set this up. So you need to use this one time code in your browser visit this page. So I'm gonna go to that page, select that. Uh, I don't know if it's going to work. You know, copying and pasting the NeoVim is a little bit funny. Uh, that is not going to work. All right, so we're going to github.com, login device, github.com, login slash device. And this is me. Yes, say I'm making this one, and I want to paste that code. Is that the right one? Yes, it is. Um, all right, and then when I hit continue, going to say, yes, this is me. I know which resources act on my behalf. So this is basically connecting Copilot plugin in NeoVim to my GitHub Copilot account. It says, great, you're all set. Uh, I go back to NeoVim. That disappears when it's ready to go. And there it says little message, authenticated. Right, should be ready to go. So I thought we could just try um, playing around, see what it looks like. I'm just going to open an R file. Failed to run diagnostics. Don't know what that is. Something to do with linters. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, let's just start writing some code. So, you know, I'm using the Blink plugin in NeoVim here already. Um, you can see it's uh, doing some suggestions, but now you see something new that comes up in the Blink suggestion list. Um, you know, these are all functions that it thinks I might want to autocomplete to. Don't know what that little thing is. Maybe that's text, but you notice this one at the top, that's the little GitHub Copilot um, icon. And here it's suggesting what it thinks I actually want to do. It thinks that I want to use ggplot too, which clearly it uh, doesn't know me very well yet. I, I, I suppose that probably as you interact with this more, it will learn more about what you do and what you use. Uh, but right now it's kind of horribly wrong. What I actually wanted was yes, library, but I wanted the Argo floats library package and there it is um yeah so 
you know, I can start making some uh, code. Um, maybe I'm going to do data. Uh, data Argo floats is what it's guessing. <laughs> Again, it's pretty wrong. Um, I don't think that even is a data set, is it? Let me, whoa. Argo floats. Well, let's find out. Let's just run this. Uh, data Argo floats. Yeah, it isn't even a data there. So Copilot's a little bit out to lunch, I think. Um, I was using this on another computer and it was actually giving me some um, interesting suggestions that weren't actually half bad. Uh, like say, you know, load the CTD data, which I just have to do. And maybe I want to do uh, C or let's do CTD raw and we'll do CTD inside CTD trim. All right. So look, well, so Copilot is thinking, I want to just take the first 10 elements of CTD raw. I, I don't really know where it's getting this from, but no, I want to use CTD trim and I'm going to give it CTD raw. Again, Copilot's trying to do some weird stuff here. I don't really know what it's trying to do. I think, I think it tries to guess at the arguments you want or the usage that you're using. And I, I suppose it probably gets better at this over time, um, but I don't know. Anyway. That is all to say, um, you know, getting this set up is uh, pretty easy. Um, not a whole lot involved here um, and it's running. So maybe uh, you want to try it too. All right, that's it for me.